celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au Well, hello and welcome to day three of the Royal Adelaide Show, the 244th Royal Adelaide Show. We've held an awful lot of them. But speaking of things that go way back into history, I'm here with Barry Billingham. Barry, we are at the state finals of a very important competition. Yes, we are. This is the state championships for the Farriers and Blacksmiths Association. We hold them every year here. Um, we're about the, the second largest one in Australia now. The Brisbane exhibition is big, bigger than ours, but ours is a better quality, I feel. Now, there are going to be people watching this program right now on Facebook or YouTube or even the Stock Journal's website saying, well, what's a blacksmith? Right. Well, by definition, a blacksmith is an iron worker. A farrier shoes horses. So if you extrapolate that out a little further, a farrier is a black can be a blacksmith, but a blacksmith won't be a farrier. Because the farriers are specialists in the anatomy of the horse. Exactly right. We're specialists. The horse's feet and legs is all we do. We know everything there is to know about a horse, basically from the belly button down. But because it's a whole package, we have to have a general understanding. We understand the biomechanics of the leg, how it works, the anatomy of it, what's in inside, and we shoe the horse to cater for those. Because they're not all perfect. Some of them got a bent leg or a twisted foot, and we learn how to, to uh, cater to that to keep the horse going and sound for as long as it possibly can be. So humans, we change our shoes every day. Sometimes if you're a lady like me, you might change your shoes several times a day. But horses, they have the same pair of shoes bespoke for them on for quite a few few weeks. Yep. What we do today with these horses will last them for six weeks and then they'll change them. So if we make a little bump or it's not quite fitting right, that horse has got to cope with that for six weeks. So we have to make sure, even in our daily work, that we keep the horse as sound as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can. We're going to have a look at the competition in just a moment's time, but there was a time that in Adelaide and across South Australia, there were blacksmith stores or shops or shop fronts in every little town. And we're actually going to have a look at some of the beautiful old footage we have now of blacksmiths back in the day here in our state. Yep. We, there used to be a blacksmith shop just about on every corner in every town. Because back then, the horse did everything. There was no tractors, so teams of horses would plough paddocks and harvest fields and make hay and deliver your bread and your milk. I'm old enough to remember that happening, um, and I miss those days actually. Uh, it was a simpler time and less complicated, but of course one horsepower. We've got tractors now with 700 horsepower, so it, it's progress has made the horse almost obsolete. Having said that, there's never been so many horses in Australia as there is now doing less work, because most horses nowadays are just kept for pleasure. That's right, and farriers are so so important though to keeping our horses at home and using them out whether we're mustering or whether we're show jumping. Exactly right, there's an old saying, no foot, no horse, and it's so true, because without the farrier keeping shoes on the horse and keeping them working, they would wear their feet down to the point where they were so sore they couldn't work anymore, so they'd have to be turned out, you bring in another horse. But with shoeing, it keeps the horse sound and comfortable and moving and doing its daily work. Well, let's have a look at some of these old photos, hey, and uh, look back in time at uh, a time when farriers, blacksmiths were so important that we needed one on every corner. Yeah, well, what you're looking at there is, is one of the farriers today just measuring the shoe that he's made um, because they've got to be precisely fit. They're scored by how well the shoe fits the foot, um, how well it's made. Uh, the safety of the horse is paramount with everything. Uh, the judge will he'll make them make another shoe if he doesn't think it's going to do the right thing by the horse. Um, if they've over-trimmed or under-trimmed, he tells them along the way um, and judges them accordingly. So they nearly have to get it perfect every time. Let's have a look at some of the work they've already done here. We've got a couple of rasps uh, that are necessary for the work of a farrier. Well, this is just what we do, use every day. It's like an oversized nail file. Um, and we have hoof nippers as well. Again, just like nail clippers. The, the anatomy of a horse's hoof is exactly the same as your fingernail. And if you can imagine all of your fingernails fused into one lump, that's a horse's foot. Well, the first job of a farrier is to clean and rasp the foot, right, and get it all ready to go, just, just like a manicure. Exactly. We give them a pedicure every six weeks. <laughs> what else have we got here? I notice we've got two nails here, and they're totally different sizes. Now, I'm guessing that's because we have horses of different sizes. It is. The larger nail is, a, is an E10 size nail, and that's for nailing on the big Clydesdale shoes. And the smaller one, 
That's an E2, and that's what we use to nail on the little pony shoes. So we issue everything from Shetland ponies to Clydesdales, and the Clydesdales will be coming in very shortly. Now, we've actually got some examples of competition uh, results so far here today. Now, this is a great question, really. How on earth do you judge one of these competitions? These are all judged on precision. Now, in this particular event, the judge made this shoe at home, and he said, I've made it out of that, so you have to copy it. So you make that shoe out of that sort of piece of steel. And they use their varying hand tools to create those two, or that article, out of that starting point. How long does that take to do? They had an hour and five minutes to make that, from that. And so the judge will judge them on the precision of the replica of what they've initially pulled together? He would judge them on how well they've duplicated that particular shoe. A case in point is these two shoes. That was the shoe that the judge made. And this was the shoe that one of the competitors had to make to duplicate it. And as you can see, it's not far off being a perfect, perfect example. Why is that shoe shaped the way it is compared to this shoe? This one is a cross weight, a side weighted cross firing shoe for a standard grip. It's to make them swing their hind legs further apart so they don't come underneath the body and collide with the opposing front foot. And that's what that shoe is supposed to do. It's to stop that from occurring. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now that shoe you've got hold of is actually made out of aluminium. And this is what we call a side bone shoe. This is a therapeutic shoe that you would put on a horse who has a growth on the outside, the lateral side of his front foot, and that's to stop his, his foot from tilting that way. We make it wider than the normal hoof. His normal foot would sit probably there, like that, and then this extra piece out the side stops his foot from twisting uh, because he's got this abnormal growth. Exactly right. Exactly right. These are therapeutic shoes. Not every horse would have, need them or have them, but we have the skills to create them from just a straight aluminium bar. Well, we're very lucky here to have uh, Barry Billingham, who is the chief steward of this wonderful section of the show, the second biggest competition in all of the state. Should we go check out the competition? Yes, yeah, certainly. Can do. No problem. I'll take you over to this horse over here. Now these horses have just been shot in the intermediate section of the, of the show and they're, they're conversing there about how well that horse has been, been shot, how well the shoe's been made, how well it's been fitted. Farriers are great critics of their own work or their, their peers' work. Um, they, lo they love getting underneath horses and looking at feet and what have you. Um, the judge would have already scored these, um, these horses and he'll award the points as he, as he sees fit. Where does your judge come from this year? Our judge this year is Jim Bryant. He's from a little town called Kumiu, just north of Auckland in, in New Zealand on the North Island. He's been competing and a, a farrier for all of his life. He's competed with greats tests both nationally and internationally. And we're just so blessed to have him come out here and, and show these guys uh, uh, his skills and to, and to judge their work. So we've had a little look now at a shoe on a horse that's actually been shod. Shall we go and check out some of the work on the anvil? Are we allowed to do that? Yeah, we can watch some of these guys. They're just... This horse on the end here was basically surplus to requirements, but because these people are good enough to loan us their, their horses for the day, we have to make sure that that horse is going home shot completely. So these young fellas here uh, are making up shoes to go on the horse. We can see young Nick over there is just, a, just nailing on that shoe. Um, to, so that the horse will go home with a complete set of handmade, precision-made shoes um, so that the owners have got something that they can work with when they get home. Now, we're standing next to a lovely, warm little fireplace over here. That's not for comfort, is it? No, that's, that's the, the heart of our work. Um, these forges are burning a material called coke. They can easily get to 2,000 degrees. Steel melts at 16, 1,600 degrees, so it's not difficult to put a bit of steel in there, forget about it, and come back and you've got two bits of steel. Um, that's called burning the steel. Uh, we can forge weld in there. They make bar shoes. They make ornamental work. You'll see some of the blacksmithing items down the front there, They're all made in one of these forges. Let's cover off some of the things that blacksmiths once upon a time made. Blacksmiths made everything. The horses and the carts, the wheels for the carts were all tied with iron. All the springs, all the shackles, all the bolts, all the nuts were all made by blacksmiths. Originally, the blacksmith in the village back in England and back in Europe was also the vet. So he was the horse doctor, the animal doctor. He was also the tinker, he fixed saucepans, he made shovels, he made picks and crowbars as what, and what have you. So he was a multi-skilled person. And over time, the veterinary surgeon has sort of gone one way, the tinker has gone another way, the blacksmith and engineer has gone in a different direction, and out of that came the farrier. And with the modern anvil of machine-made shoes, the need to hand-make shoes isn't quite as great as it used to be. 
Having said that, not every horse has normal feet. So sometimes you need to have a machine made shoe and you've got to have the skills to do that. Uh, a factory mate. Not a factory mate, a handmade shoe, I'm sorry. Yeah. Speaking of uh, handmade shoes here, at, uh, we're seeing one of our competitors go away, uh, go work away now, Zach, and I'm curious, I hear that these guys are quite superstitious. Yes, there's a lot of superstition around horseshoes. Traditionally, a horseshoe can only be hung up upside down with the heels facing down by the man who made the shoe. If you hang a horseshoe up, it should always be heels up because it keeps all the luck in. The only one who can turn it up the other way is the man who made it. Traditionally, we put seven nails in a shoe, five on the outside, three on the inside, because that's the devil's number and it keeps the devil away. My goodness, they're not serious, are they? No, true. These traditions have gone back thousands of years. Originally, the devil was a cloven-footed animal, right? He went, because he saw horses with shoes on, he went to a blacksmith and said, I want shoes on my feet. And the blacksmith recognised him as being the devil and thought, here's my chance. So he put a normal horseshoe on a cloven foot, which is like a cow's foot or a deer's foot or a goat foot. And the, the devil couldn't walk because these feet, these shoes, these metal shoes, stopped his feet from working properly. So the blacksmith said, if you give me all the luck in the world, I'll fix it so that you can walk. And that's why, that's why blacksmiths and horseshoes are considered to be lucky. And a lot of young brides years ago were married over an anvil in the town. The blacksmith performed all the wedding ceremonies as well. So the old tradition of being married over the anvil was being married in a blacksmith shop. Well, we're seeing one of our uh, horses being shot at the moment here and uh, they'll go home, as you said, with a lovely new pair of shoes. I'm curious, what did horses do? What did we do with our horses prior to them being shod the way they are today, prior to farriers? Well, horses have had protection put on their feet since the time of the Egyptians because horses were used as, as basically weapons of war. So they needed to have their horses serviceable for as long as they possibly could. So originally with the, with the Egyptians, they, they used what they called hippo sandals, which was plaited reeds into a pad with laces and they would lace them to the horse's foot. Along comes the Iron Age and some brights spark decided that we could use steel or iron to coat the horse's hoof so he would last longer. And over a period of time, the horseshoe developed and it, basically it hasn't changed much in thousands of years. It's still the shape of the horse's foot because the horse hasn't changed. It's still the same as it was thousands of years ago. Well, look, Barry Billingham, thank you so much for your time here today. I'm curious to know, who, which name do you think we need to be looking out for here as a potential winner in the state finals? We have a young fella here um, from Murray Bridge named Brad Strauss. Now, Brad just went to the Echo up in Brisbane two weeks ago and is the current open horseshoeing champion. So it doesn't get much better than that. And I reckon he'll be the hardest one to beat. He's only a young fellow, he's only 21 years of age, but he's an exceptional farrier and I'm sure he'll do very, very well. Well, I'll tell you what, we've been enjoying our comfortable shoes here today, but we only have to wear them for a few hours. These guys have got to have perfect shoes on for six weeks at a time. It is a wonderful competition to celebrate the work of our farriers. Uh, good luck to all of our competitors here today, and thank you for taking us on a walk down history lane and, uh, and then a tour through today's competition. More than welcome. Thank you. Well, boys and girls, mums and dads, we're going to be bringing you lots of the action from the show today, including the horses in action in the main arena. We've got rider classes on here today, but we are also going to take you to the Ag Explorers track. And that's a huge hit with all the kids. They get to get 13 stamps on a passport all the way through the show. We've got lots coming up and do not miss our segment on the wood chop in a few moments time. The state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and the high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. The show.com.au.
Well, welcome back to our live stream here on day three of the Royal Adelaide Show. We're taking a bit of a historical tour today. We've been with our farriers and blacksmiths a moment ago, and now we are here with uh, the Machinery Preservation Society from Barossa Valley. Now, Philip Holmes, you're going to take me on a bit of a tour of these machines that have been thoroughly replaced in the modern era, and you're going to tell me what on earth they used to do and what we do today. Yes, I will. I'll, we can have a walk around our site here and, and talk about what we've got on display. What are we standing in front of right now? Well, we're, just, we're standing in front of a pump which is being driven by a 1907 Ruston Proctor steam engine. Um, the, uh, the steam engine produces steam and it can then power uh, a steam engine in its, by itself which can then drive another pump. Um, and at the moment it's driving a pump off its flywheel. Um, as well as producing steam. So this year's theme aptly is water, uh, something that we're all struggling with at the moment yes. in terms of uh, farming and how yes. we manage it in terms of our cities and our homes. And so everything here today is about, well, we've got washing machines, we've yes. got sprinklers for the yes. garden, I can't wait to see. We've got dredges and sludges. Yes. Let's go for a wander and have a look around. Let's go. This way. Come on, Em. Bring the boys and girls with us. Okay, what on earth so, does this machine do? So this, this machine, as I said, is a 1907 Ruston Proctor steam engine and you put wood in the firebox and you produce steam. Um, and it's then used to power various uh, pieces of equipment, pumps or um, shearing sheds. They were, they were often used in shearing sheds. Um, all you really, really needed was water and wood. And away you go. So these days, what would we use in place of this? You'd have, it'd all be electric. So you'd have electric motors in, in bigger shearing sheds. You have portable shearing plants, um, which are much easier to shift around and, and much more portable. Um, even though that's portable, it's still quite a, quite a, a heavy thing. Uh, it's not around. easy to port. No, no, no. <laughs> that's right. Now, what are we standing in front of here? This is a, uh, a sludge pump, and it would have been used for someone like uh, the NWS, the Engineering Water Supply, for um, desludging dams or, um, you know, if they had a hole, where they have, if you see a uh, water main, where we have broken water mains and it, it would fill up with water, this would be the kind of thing you would use to do it. They'd have, they'd have more modern pumps to, to uh, use now, but that's the kind of thing you would use Fantastic. use it for. Now, we've asked our good friends here to turn on the sprinkler for us. Should we get out of the yeah, way? Yeah, well, we better... We better move out of the way. All right, we'll get out of the way here. But this, boys and girls, just here, is a sprinkler from... What, what year is that sprinkler from? Uh, 1905, it is. These days we do something that is quite an evolution on that. Where's... Hang on. Uh-oh, yeah. let's get out of the way. <laughs> so this is what would have been in a normal household garden? I would say so, yes. Yes, you can see it here. We, we don't want the camera wet. Um, but that's that's... As a, you know, like a 115-year-old sprinkler. So it's it's pretty amazing that it's still here. Indeed, yeah. indeed. And look, we're not too wet, so we've done pretty well here today. Uh, another water pump here. Uh, yes, this is um, this is a Fairbanks Morse, an American engine. It's driving a P.W. Richards pump, which is made here in Adelaide. The pump is probably I'm not sure of the date, but it would be probably in the in the early teens or something so this came out of a I think came out of a market garden up at Lenswood um, so yeah that's that's a, a South Australian product that's, that's made here. Now it's Father's Day today and uh, we're celebrating all the wonderful dads and granddads in our lives I think this would be a real hit today don't you? Oh yes definitely definitely so just behind us here is a, a Horwood Bagshaw jack pump which was produced for the Australian Army. It's in a. It's in its original box. It's never been taken out, and everything's in there. And it would be taken out on site for the Army and set up. Uh, and it was. And it's been produced here in. I think this is in Adelaide as well. And uh, but it's still in its original box, so it's really quite rare to see something like that. Now we look at uh, looked a moment ago at our sprinkler, yeah. but predating the sprinkler was, of course, the watering can. So this is just one of our members' wives has a collection of watering cans. And so it's just something because it's to do with water. Um, it's amazing how many different different types of watering cans you can get. 
Yeah, the, uh, this is quite a peculiar looking one here, but I am most interested to hop in behind here because I absolutely loathe doing laundry, but I'll tell you what, it's a darn sight easier today than it was uh, back when this was your implement. When, well, I'm not sure of the age. I actually know probably the great-grandson of the the bloke who who made them. It's a gurn made in Sananda, and in it you have a... You have a big a big funnel and you pump the handle like this and that washes your clothes and you then run it through the ringer to rinse them, uh, to uh, squeeze all the water out and hang them on the line. So thank goodness for modern washing machines is all I can say right now because this looks like a lot of wasted hours. All right, let's make our way over here because I'm interested in these smaller machines, our smaller pumps. Um, this this one here is a, is a steam pump. We talked about the the steam engine and what would happen is that the the portable steam engine would produce the steam and then this would go into this pump and that it's actually a wine pump it came from penfolds and so that that would it's steam operated it's my kind of pump i like a good wine pump now tell me let's have a look at our tractor over here let's head over the have a, head over to the back i want to jump on board so you take the microphone we're just going to do some uh plowing or something uh, this is a, a case, a diesel, 500, uh, in 1954, I think it is. Um, and we're using it actually here to drive three uh, pumps. Um, these three pumps are actually made in Adelaide as well. Um, so that's, a, again, a South Australian um, product. Philip, I'm very curious because it seems to be a mistake here. The belt has been twisted. That couldn't be operational. Yes, it is because... You twist the belt to change the direction of the pump. So if you, if it, if it's not, if the pump doesn't run in the right direction, you, it won't pump water efficiently. Whereas if you look at the pump, if you turn around to your right, if you look at, if you look at this pump, that is basically non-directional because it's a piston. Because they're a centrifugal pump, they have to run in the right direction. These are piston pumps, so they don't have to. They just pump. So you don't need to twist the belt on a pump like this. Now, we've got a machine here just behind us that looks very, very similar to the machine that we started with in terms of the pump over there and the steam production. How does this differ? Uh, this is a hot air engine. Um, it's a Haywood Tyler made in London in about 1890. And you, you need wood, again, like the steam engine, but this, this is just hot air. And the hot air goes from one cylinder to the other cylinder. And all it drives is the pump on the end and it, with, this came from a place up in the Adelaide Hills called Carmino, um, and it just pumped water from the creek up to the house. Well, Philip, it's lovely and warm over here, but I see that we've got some apples, and I'm a little bit peckish. Why do we have apples here? Uh, this is a, an apple peeler and corer. If we just move around here, just don't get too close to it. Um, and if you, it's, uh, it's come from the Barossa Valley. Uh, it's made in Melbourne, and it just peels and cores apples. Um, and uh, it's just something that, that the kids can see and they can see something happening. I think I've just copped a bit, bit of apple onto my face. <laughs> That's right, it's good for you. <laughs> can we get an apple out of this please, Philip? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> That's done well, it's very good. Well, how good is this? I can only imagine how handy it would be to have an apple core of this size in one's kitchen. That's right, yes, yes. I'm yeah. going to steal that apple core. <laughs> Do you mind if I steal this? No, go for it. <laughs> what have we got over here? Um, this, this is a, um, a collection of hand pumps. Um, you have the, uh, hang on, I'll just move around here. This is a Douglas pump. So this would have been on, would have been on an underground tank. So that's how you, you got water. So you'd put a bucket under there and cart it into the laundry. Um, these are various, uh, ro I'm not sure if there uh, will be a rotary pump, I think. Um, it will pump water. So um, they're just various sorts of pumps that were used on for agricultural or industrial purposes. The one on the other side is actually the, the original pump off the, the, uh, from the Turo CFS. Um, so that's just a big handle. So you just pump that. And my hands after my yes, you can get you can get the um, 
So that's just a collection one of our members has this collection of pumps. Sir. Well, Philip Holmes, if people are coming to the Royal Adelaide Show over the next few days and they want to come and have a wander around here, they can meet with you all and learn a bit more? Yes, yes they certainly can. Any, any questions, we're happy to answer. We have, we have um, members here every day and it's, uh, we've been here for probably 35 years, I suppose, in various sites around the, the showground, so it's, we, it's a great time. Well, we want to thank you for your preservation of all of these magnificent machines. Congratulations to your thank team you. there at the Barossa Valley. We've got a lot more to see and do today, including the woodchuck coming up in just a few moments' time. But thanks for joining us on the live stream here at the 244th Royal Adelaide Show. Celebrate the state. The people. The magic. The memories. The bright lights and high rides. The sparkling eyes. Over two full weekends. The Royal Adelaide Show. The show of a lifetime. Free purchase tickets and save. Theshow.com.au